Recall that a forecast analysis uses time series data to make predictions. Examples of time series data are daily stock prices, monthly rainfall, quarterly sales results, and annual profits. So, I have some data to use for an analysis in Simon. It contains the monthly revenue data for mobile and internet services provided to my customers. The data covers the years 2018, 2019, and 2020. Based on the trend of the last three years, I want to predict the monthly revenue for the first half of 2021. But first, let's perform the two steps that any analysis begins with. First, we must define the problem, and that's to predict monthly revenue for the first half of 2021. Second, what type of analysis will we perform? Well, it's going to be a forecast analysis because I want to make a prediction using time series data. In this case, the time series is monthly. In this demonstration, I'll create a simple forecast model to predict the monthly revenue for the first half of 2021. I'll start by creating a new pipe and I'll name it Forecast Analysis. I'll add a data tool for the revenue data and I'll make it yellow. I'll select my data source and then I'll click Apply and Build. Let's look at the data to see what's available. I have customer ID, product ID, date, and revenue. I'll click on the filter for date to see the values. And there's the data for 2018, 2019, and 2020. Now I'll add my forecast tool. I'll change the color to pink. I'll add a more descriptive tool name. I'll leave the forecast type set to automatic and let Simon choose my predictive algorithm for me. For new column name, I'll type revenue forecast. This is the column that will hold my forecasted values. I'll set Analyze By to Customer ID and Product ID. Analyze By is a way of grouping my analysis. I want to project on customer and product. My forecast value column is revenue. That's what I want to predict. The date column is date. There's always a date for any forecasting analysis since it relies on time series data. I want to predict monthly revenue so for frequency, I'll select monthly. And the number of periods is six because I want to predict the first six months of 2021. I'll click apply, and then I'll click build. There's only one error score produced in a forecast analysis. Notice that the score is perfect. It's zero. Normally, I'd be suspicious. However, for demonstration purposes, I'm working with sample data designed to produce excellent results. These results aren't typical, but my data science experts have assured me that the score is accurate for this data. Let's look at the data in the row viewer. There is now a new revenue forecast column. There are also some other new columns that are relevant to the forecasted data. I'll explain those shortly. I'll set the row viewer to last built so I can view more of my data. Let me page down a bit. It'll be easier to explain what these columns mean. Notice that the rows contain the forecasted 2021 data as well as the historical data. Simon forecasts data in a range and provides the lower, mid, and upper values. Revenue forecast holds the midpoint value of the forecasted range. Revenue forecast lower holds the minimum value of the forecasted range. And revenue forecast upper holds the maximum value of the forecasted range. Is forecast identifies if the data in the row is forecasted data or actual data. A value of true is forecasted data and a value of false is actual data. Notice that the revenue forecast column holds values for both the forecasted 2021 data and for the historical 2018, 2019, and 2020 data. Simon forecasts the historical data so I can quickly see that the model is fitting the data well. I can compare the revenue forecast predictions to the revenue data, and they're pretty close. This gives me more confidence in the model's predictions. If I want, I can use this historical and forecasted data in a visualization or export it to Excel. So, the forecast tool lets me create a forecasting visualization right away. I can click Create Forecast. A line chart is displayed that lets me create a forecast for a particular customer and a particular product. The default 
is for customer ID 1 for the mobile product. I'll change the values. And the chart adjusts with the new information. Let's examine the legend. It refers to customer ID 29 and the internet product. Model fit revenue plots the forecasted revenue for the historical rows. That's the 2018, 2019, and 2020 rows from the revenue forecast column. Actual revenue plots the actual revenue for the historical rows from the revenue column. Forecasted revenue plots the forecasted revenue for the 2021 forecasted rows from the revenue forecast column. Confidence interval for forecasted revenue plots the range of the upper and lower forecasted revenue from the revenue forecast lower and revenue forecast upper columns. It's a bit difficult to see the confidence interval for forecasted revenue. So let's zoom in a bit. Now I can see the 2021 forecasted data better. Notice that the confidence interval is narrower in the immediate future. Simon is very confident in the revenue prediction for January 2021. The interval is wider as I move farther into the future. That means Simon's confidence covers a wider range of revenue values. I can add a forecast for a second customer and a product too. The chart updates with the additional forecast information. I'll name my chart forecast for the customer and product data. Let's go back to the build page. I'll hover my mouse over view forecasts and I can see that my visualization is still available or I can create a new one. And that's it. We used the forecast tool to predict the first six months of 2021 revenue and we created a quick visualization within the tool. Let's explore what else we can do with this data.